been sung, come to an arena that tonight is guarded by the most massive police presence. There are police guarding every entrance. They're guarding the barricaded ringside. There is no alcohol on sale. There's been no fanfares. The whole build-up is being kept to a minimum. But as you can hear, the crowd are already beginning to pick up the scent of a good fight. This contest is a middleweight contest of 12 rounds, three minutes each round. A final eliminator for the British middleweight championship. Presenting from West Ham. between these two outside a gaming club in London a month ago now reaches the place where it should be in the professional boxing ring. 82,500 pounds these two are splitting a record purse for a non-title fight. And the place is tense with excitement as they get underway. Christie in the white shorts and they get together immediately, and there's no love lost between these two, that much we know. Christie, loser of just one professional fight. And over goes Christie in the opening 30 seconds. And his legs have gone, Taylor's got him. Inside the first minute, sensation upon sensation. And Taylor's going for the finish. Christie's been stopped in one round once before, his only defeat, and it might just happen again. A firework explodes in the arena. Desperate moments for Errol Christie. And the Kaler fans are going berserk with excitement. is coming across dangerously again as Christie tries to get his jab working to keep him away. One very near the borderline, a left hand from Caleb. And these two swapping punches as though there's no tomorrow. needle fight, a grudge fight, it's plain for all to see. And this time, Taylor goes over, delayed action, right hand got him, so they've been down once apiece in the opening round. What a start to this fight. Christie now going for the finish. the fight in the opening minute and now he's right back in it Taylor looks very hurt to me about 15 seconds left of this opening round and what an opening round it is coming up of an amazing opening round. And Christie's still punching at the bell, and Kayla didn't like that, and Harry Gibbs goes over to Kayla and says, just calm down. Calm down. It's difficult to be calm 
in these circumstances, in this explosive atmosphere, and a first round that had all the makings of a sensation. Taylor was the first to score in the opening 30 seconds or so. Right hand on the side of the face, and over went Christie, and suddenly the defeat from Jose Sace looked like happening again to him. But Christie came back. He's got a cut eye, Errol Christie. The left eye is gone. So, another sensation in this opening round. Second up, round two. So one knockdown apiece, and the fight only three minutes old. Christie's left eye greased. The white grease standing out on his dark face. This is free slugging. And it shows the needle between them. Which one's going to be the stronger? Taylor's been beaten three times in 32 professional fights. Christie beaten just once in 21. Christie's right hand comes over again, the left hook again catches Taylor. Taylor's walking into punches in his anxiety to get close to Christie. Taylor snorts through the nose on which he's had a sinus operation. Bubble signature tune comes again for Kalov. Christie just about got the upper hand at this moment. Kalov finds him with the right, though. which way this goes. Good right hand again from Christie. Taylor snorts again. Furious round. Kalov, 24 years old, the former British and Commonwealth middleweight champion who lost those titles to Tony Simpson in this very ring just under a year ago on points over 12 rounds. At one time, Mark was ranked the world's number six middleweight. Second up, round three. Well, the build up to this fight was unfortunate to say the least. The fight itself is marvellous. needed, Harry Gibbs. These two are hitting each other with every punch in the book and with all their force. A low one again from Kayla. Oh, and he's got Kayla over. Round three. Second time Kayla's been down. He takes a rest. 
So it's 2-1 now in Christie's favour. Taylor in trouble on the ropes. Somehow gets away from them. Shaken again by that knockdown. Taylor trying to get his own right hand to work. Taylor has come up off the floor to win in other fights. This is a fight to the finish in every sense of the word here. This is as vicious and tough and rough a fight as I've seen for a long time in a British ring. Harry Gibbs, even Harry Gibbs, finding this difficult to control. There's a good right, and Christie falls into the pinch. If he hadn't fallen into the clinch, he'd have been on the floor. So Kayla strikes back again. And Gibbs can barely part him. Christie's hurt. There's the bell. And Christie is glad to sag onto his stool. What an amazing fight this is. So Kayla had the last word at the end of the third round. But Kayla was on the floor earlier. This was the moment when he was in trouble again. There it is, the big right hand booming through, and Mark was on the seat of his pants for the second time. Single, round four. The fourth round of this truly amazing fight, they go straight to it. No quarter given or asked. An amazing fight. The grudge fight of this year or any other. The two men just bludgeoning each other. There's no other word for it, and Kayla's getting at him again. Will Christie survive this onslaught? Christie's left eye cut, remember. been a moment when these two have rested. <laughs> Kayla is the man with the look of victory on him at the moment. Harry Gibbs shirt spattered with blood. Christie looks tired inside. Taylor keeps up this savage onslaught. In it goes again, hooking all the time. There is some fearful punishment being exchanged. Christie looks very tired. Kayla seems to have found new life. Christie doing his best to avoid the punches coming at him. He's ducking some of them. Trying to get his left to work again. Trying to pull his boxing together. And make some sense out of this fight which for a moment looked like becoming a nightmare for him. Boxing his way back into it. Taylor has slowed down. The heavier a 
some more aggressive punching coming now from Caleb. There's the right hand again. The ball's coming up. And they haven't heard the bell, and on they go, and Kayla has to be pushed back to his corner. Christie comes over as though he's going to have an argument and is taken away by seconds. And Gibbs has now given Kayla two cautions about exchanging punches after the bell. Here we are again towards the end of that fourth round with Kayla getting on top again. One really good right, there it is. And Christie falls inside, the bell came and went and still they went on slugging. Seconds out, round five. And those first four rounds have flown by. Kayla showing what a hard man he is. Can Christie cope with him? Kayla like some savage fighting machine. Certainly looks the more tired of the two, no question of that. Glad to hang on inside. put so much into the first four and a half rounds that the pace naturally enough is slowing a little or is it and Christie in trouble again Kayla seems to have a built-in clock he knows when the three minutes are coming up and he finishes every round like this and he puts another one in at the bell and he finishes the round well on top, Caleb. Well on top now. Although he's been down twice. Christie, again, the eye giving him trouble. Kayla giving him far more. Second down, round six. Christie's boxing skills still there, but the punches don't seem to have too much effect. They don't keep Kayla away, and they don't now seem to hurt Kayla either. Well, it always looked like being a classic encounter on paper, and it's more than lived up to the promise. trying to get up on his toes and use the jab. The savagery of these exchanges is really quite astonishing. Christie somehow hanging in there. Another thudding right hand to the top of Christie's head, doing him no good again. 
minute to go in the sixth. Taylor still pulling his way forward. Hardly ever taking a backward step. Cutting in punch after punch, and Christie stays with him and gets his own right hand back, as well as the left. And these two are taking everything out of each other. They're glad to hold on and hang on. And we're only halfway through. Both taking a breather now, and that's hardly surprising. They break at the bell. You sense now that it's going to be a question of determination that will win this. Who can stand up the longest and show the most courage? Kaylor putting up the fight of a lifetime here, having been on the floor twice. And at this moment looks the stronger of the two men and still handing out a lot of punishment. And Christie, who's had trouble with that eye from the opening round, somehow staying there with Kaylor despite what's coming at him and providing a fight that everyone will remember. Second out, round seven. <laughs> Kayla now is heavily greased above the eyes, as Christie is. It's an ominous fact, I suppose, from Kayla's point of view, that uh, his three defeats, the only three defeats on his professional record, have all occurred in this ring at Wembley. The disqualification against Tony Serda for hitting after the belt. The defeat inside the distance by the tough American Buster Drayton. And the points defeat by Tony Simpson. All here at Wembley. Complete hometown fighter, Kayla. He's had every single professional fight in London. The last time he fought out of town was in the Moscow Olympics of 1980. And Christie sees his chance again. The chance to get back on top, and this time it's Kayla that's hanging on inside. And Kayla looks hurt. Taylor's put so much work into the opening six rounds. I wonder how much he's got left. And somehow, from somewhere, Kayla finds the strength to come swinging back. These two fighting as though they're on the cobblestones outside. Which is where all this started, in October. Good short right from Christie. This time Christie finishes on top with the right hand. These two men are giving everything in this fight. And still, you wouldn't like to bet which way this might go. Kayla suddenly found the energy to come back after being in some trouble earlier in this round. Came storming back, throwing punches all the time and forcing Christie back and back. Second down. Five to go, if we get that far. Kayla, a pound and a half heavier at the weigh-in earlier today. 11 stone six, right on the limit. Christie, 11, four and a half.
Venezuela is the one who's impressed himself most on this fight. Christie's had his moments, but they've only been moments. And the most of the time, we've looked at Christie and felt that he might be swept away under this non-stop barrage of punches from Kayla. But here he is, he's still there. It says a lot for the courage and the stamina and the fitness of these two men. They've given and taken so much. Taylor's strength is really quite amazing, quite terrifying from Christie's point of view. Again and again, these two men seem to reach down into the very deep reserves of strength and find something. astonishing finish but worthy of the fight as it went all the way <laughs> truly amazing fight lived up to everything and there's no further animosity between the two men they've punched it out of each other Christie acknowledges defeat and Kalo accepts victory so the bonfire night battle lived up to expectations. But how did the reputation of the sport survive outside the ring at Wembley? Well, big fight interest, but fears of trouble prevented a full house. The extra security seemed to work, though. That combined with a complete ban on alcohol. It was soft drinks only for the fight faithful, but they seemed to enjoy it. Terry Lawless had brought in his own security men to keep control of Kayla's volatile fans. I got in touch with several people that I know that go to the football grounds and things like that and uh, we employ the firm to just keep things calm. They, they know the troublemakers. They know they? the troublemakers and they, we just mingle them in the audience to make sure that they stopped anything before it started. The odd banger was all that disturbed the peace. A happy outcome for promoter Mike Barrett. The, the crowd behaved very well and I'm intent on seeing that as far as the shows I'm concerned with will continue like that because we must make quite sure that the people who buy tickets can come in, sit down in comfort, and not be harassed by hooligans and stupid people. The only loser, a disappointed Errol Christie, who often seemed just one desperate punch away from victory. I'm sure everybody in the hall thought he had Kayla going at one time, as indeed, Kayla had him going. I mean, I take nothing away from Mark Kayla. Mark Kayla done a tremendous job tonight, and he's got every respect and every credit that he deserves. Did you think Errol boxed at his best tonight? I, I think I've seen him box better. I, I mean, after saying that I take nothing away from Mark Kayla, I think that's the worst performance I've seen Errol Christie put on. I mean, he didn't have his rhythm, he didn't throw his shots like I know he did, and I can. Um, but nonetheless, Mark Kayla may not have let him. Um, right. It was one of those things, Harry. Um, tonight, Mark Kayla was the better man. What was good to see was that at the end, they fell into each other's arms, it was all okay, and all the animosity had gone. Harry, tonight Errol Christie lost. 
for Boxing One. Well, Mark Kaler, those are the ringside verdicts. You're the man, though, who emerged from that mayhem victorious. Did you feel it was an off-form Errol Christie you were fighting last night? Um, I've only seen him, him uh, fight once, his last fight live, and um, he boxed probably better than I've ever seen him. He said televised fights. He boxed better against me than I've ever seen him. Then, as Harry said at the, at the end of the fight, the hugs and the handshakes, and you did appear after all the pre-fight trouble to have a genuine regard for each other. Yeah, we were, um, as I said before, we're just two good uh, athletes and we showed that we're two good sportsmen as well. I don't think many people predicted it would have gone to eight. After the fireworks of the first round, nobody would have predicted that. What was behind uh, that ferocious start? Was that all the anger coming out? Um, it was just, uh, just happened that it was a, a very, a very fast pace and um, the stronger man had to come on and win. You were down in the first, both down in the first, then you were down again in the third round. We can see the, uh, the punch that put you down here. Did you feel that you were really in trouble here? Um, this wasn't a, a knockdown like the first round. This was just a flash knockdown. If you see as I touch the canvas, I'm already on the way back up again. And then it really was a war of attrition because the pace never let up. You both showed amazing strength. Where did you actually get that strength from? Did you feel it slipping away? I've been training um, hard now for the last three months, and I knew I was in shape to go uh, 12 rounds, however fast the pace was. And then in the eighth, the punch that finished it, where did you summon this one up from? Um, I felt him uh, slipping in the seventh round, and I was just looking for the shot to finish him then. Um, it just happened that he came in the eighth. At that point, you knew it was all over? Uh, if he had got up, it would have only been more of the same, so. What's the future now? You got Harold Graham waiting in the wings, and also possibly Tony Simpson a return there. What's the favourite in your mind there? Um, I'm, I'm looking for a um, return fight for Tony Simpson. It'd be a, a big draw. Um, Tony Simpson's rated number five, number six in the world. He'd put me right in the top ten, or up in the top ten ratings. So um, I'm going to have a sit down and talk with my manager later on. You like the nice quiet nights, don't you? Yes, yeah. Then a bit later this month, another important date, you and Errol up before the board to give an account of what happened prior to this fight. How do you think the board might treat you? Uh, the, the board are going to treat us fairly and squarely, and um, it's all in their hands now. What sort of case do you think you've got? <clears throat> um, obviously, we've both, um, we've both got a case to answer, but it's nothing like the, the case that's been put forward by the um, uh, national newspapers. Um, I just hope that we're going to get a, a fair hearing. Well, I'm sure you did your case a lot of good last night at Wembley. If you've been hearing a few gurglings off, it's the rest of the Kayla household, wife Patricia and son Jimmy. How's Jimmy shaping up? It's his uh, second appearance on sports night, isn't it? Second appearance, yeah, that's right. How's he shaping up? Taking after his father? <laughs> Quiet and even-tempered, is he? Yes, he is. What's the, uh, the last couple of weeks been like for you, Patricia, with all the pre-fight ballyhoo? Have you felt the same kind of pressure as Mark? No, I don't think Mark's felt that much pressure. He's been really good at home. He's been really happy. But now, looking forward to a bit of a break, no doubt. A bit of a break, yeah. Your own mood now, Mark. I think everyone would expect you to come out of a night like that, feeling uh, on top of the world. That's not the case, is it? No, I'm the same for every, every fight I have. I always go into a deep depression uh, straight after a fight. It's a case of, um, I don't know, uh, any climax, I suppose. Well, it certainly wasn't an anti-climax mm -hmm. as far as we were concerned. Congratulations on a great night at Wembley. Let's give you something else to cheer you up now. And that's uh, another victory.